There's a war happening right now, not between nations, between chips. Inside every AI data center, the most powerful processors ever built are starving to death. They can perform trillions of calculations per second, but they spend most of their time doing nothing, waiting. Desperate for data that's crawling toward them through ancient highways built for a slower world. The bottleneck isn't computing power anymore, it's memory. And for years, the solution was always the same. Make memory faster, push harder, burn more power. Until someone asked a different question. What if we didn't go faster? What if we went up? This is the story of high bandwidth memory. The story of how engineers decided to build skyscrapers, microscopic towers of silicon thinner than human hair, connected by millions of copper elevators you can't see with your naked eye and how these impossible structures became the only thing standing between us and the collapse of the AI revolution. If the future of AI depends on one technology, you're looking at it right now. Let's go back to understand why this problem became so desperate. For decades, computers got better by following a simple pattern. Processors got faster, memory got faster, everything scaled together. Moore's law was the rising tide that lifted all boats. But around the mid-2000s, something broke. Processors kept accelerating at breakneck speed. GPUs started hitting millions of cores. But memory? Memory started falling behind, way behind. The gap between how fast a processor could think and how fast it could get the data it needed to think about kept growing wider. Engineers gave this problem a name, the memory wall. And by 2015, we'd hit it. Hard. Think about it like this. You've hired the world's greatest chef. She can prepare a hundred Michelin star meals every minute. But you've only given her one assistant to bring ingredients from the pantry, and that assistant walks. Slowly. Your genius chef spends 90% of her time standing idle, waiting for flour and eggs. That's what was happening inside GPUs. The memory technology powering high-performance graphics cards was called GDDR, Graphics Double Data Rate Memory. And GDDR was genuinely impressive. GDDR pushed data transfer speeds higher and higher, like forcing water through a narrow pipe at incredible pressure. But that narrow pipe was the problem. GDDR used a 32-bit interface. 32 thin wires carrying data between the memory and the processor. To move more data, Engineers had to make those signals faster, which meant higher voltages, more heat, more power consumption. The physics were becoming brutal. Signal integrity was degrading. Costs were exploding. By 2013, the industry was running out of headroom. AI was just emerging, and researchers were already warning that memory bandwidth would be the limiting factor for everything from machine learning to scientific simulation. The bottleneck wasn't fixable by making GDDR faster. It needed a completely different architecture. The answer would come from an idea that seemed ridiculous. What if we stacked chips vertically, like building a microscopic apartment complex? And what if we could drill holes straight through silicon to connect them? The breakthrough came from a collaboration between some of the biggest names in the semiconductor industry. SK Hynix produced the first HBM memory chip in 2013, and in October of that year, HBM was adopted by GDEC as an industry standard. AMD brought it to market in 2015 with their Fiji GPUs, the first commercial product to use this radical new memory. The core idea was deceptively simple. Stop trying to make a narrow river faster. Build a wider river instead. HBM took a completely different approach to bandwidth. Instead of 32 wires, HBM used a 1024-bit interface, literally 32 times wider. It was like going from a two-lane country road to a 64-lane superhighway. Suddenly, you could move massive amounts of data at the same time without needing to run those signals at insane speeds. But here's the problem. You can't lay down 1024 wires horizontally on a circuit board. There's no physical space. The solution was radical, vertical integration. Instead of placing memory chips side by side, HBM stacks them. Multiple DRAM dies, up to 16 in the latest generation, stacked directly on top of each other. Each layer is between 30 to 50 micrometers thick, thinner than a human hair. The entire tower stands less than a millimeter tall. 
At the bottom of the stack is a special base logic die. This isn't memory. It's the traffic controller managing all the data flowing between the memory stack and the processor. And here's the crucial part. This entire stack is placed directly next to the processor on a special silicon substrate called an interposer. The proximity is everything. In traditional systems, memory chips sit inches away from the processor. In HBM, they're millimeters apart. This cuts latency dramatically and reduces power consumption by something like 50% compared to GDDR. But stacking chips is one thing. Connecting them is where things get truly insane. Here's the engineering challenge. You have 8, 12, or 16 silicon chips stacked on top of each other. How do you connect them electrically without using wires? The answer is TSVs, through silicon wires. These are microscopic vertical wires that pass completely through each layer of silicon. The TSV concept traces back to William Shockley's 1958 patent, but the first 3D chips using TSVs were developed in 1980s Japan. SK Hynix manufactured the first HBM module based on TSV technology in 2013. Picture it. Engineers use advanced etching equipment to drill tens of thousands of microscopic holes straight down through the silicon. Each hole is only a few micrometers wide. Then they coat the inside with an insulating layer and fill it with copper. Each HBM stack contains tens of thousands of these copper pillars, creating a dense three-dimensional highway for data and power. The precision required is almost incomprehensible. These holes must be perfectly aligned across every layer of the stack. A positioning error of just a few nanometers compounds as you go up, causing connections to fail. Manufacturers use electron beam inspection tools that can see through the layers to detect defects buried deep inside the finished stack. Every single one of those thousands of connections has to be perfect. But you can't just drill holes. You have to bond the layers together. Between each die are thousands of microscopic solder balls called microbumps, each 30 to 50 micrometers in diameter. These create the physical and electrical connection between layers. Early HBM used a slow, delicate process to bond these layers. SK Hynix pioneered mass reflow molded underfill, MR muff, packaging technology, which improved thermal dissipation and made them the preferred partner for NVIDIA's systems. In this process, all the layers are heated simultaneously and a protective underfill material is injected into the gaps to strengthen the stack and help with heat dissipation. Samsung developed similar advanced materials to achieve the same goals. The final result? A cube of memory less than a millimeter tall that can deliver over a terabyte of data every second. This was the breakthrough, but the real story is what happened when AI showed up and said, we need more. Liking the video helps more people see it, and subscribing supports future deep dives into AI infrastructure. When ChatGPT launched in November 2022, it changed everything. Suddenly, the entire world realized that AI was real, it was powerful, and it was going to reshape every industry. But behind the scenes, AI engineers were quietly panicking about a single constraint, memory bandwidth. The demand for HBM is projected to grow from 1 to 23 million gigabytes in 2022 to 972 million gigabytes by 2027, nearly eightfold growth. And it's all being driven by AI. Here's why. Modern large language models have trillions of parameters. Training them requires moving astronomical amounts of data between memory and processors. Without sufficient bandwidth, thousands of processing cores inside an AI chip would spend significant time starving for data, leading to massive inefficiencies. Current HBM 3E generation memory can deliver approximately 1.02 terabytes per second per stack. To put that in perspective, that's enough to transfer 230 full HD movies every single second, and that's per stack. High-end AI accelerators like NVIDIA's H200 use multiple HBM stacks, delivering aggregate bandwidths measured in tens of terabytes per second. But AI didn't just need bandwidth, it needed capacity. 
The rise of agentic AI and long context windows requires massive amounts of VRM to store the model's short-term memory, with single GPUs now needing upwards of 288 GB of HBM. This explosion in demand triggered an all-out war between the world's memory manufacturers. In Q2 2025, SK Hynix held 62% market share, Micron 21%, and Samsung just 70%. Samsung, once the dominant force in memory, stumbled badly. Samsung's HBM market share plummeted from 41% in Q2 2024 to 17% in Q2 2025 as the company struggled to pass NVIDIA's qualification tests. SK Hynix surged into the lead, becoming the primary supplier for NVIDIA's most advanced systems. This isn't just about bragging rights. The global HBM market is projected to grow from $38 billion in 2025 to $58 billion in 2026. And supply is completely sold out. If you want HBM for your AI accelerator in 2026, you should have placed your order in 2024. Which brings us to 2025 and the next generation, HBM4. GDEC released the official HBM4 specification in April 2025, and it represents the most significant architectural change since HBM's introduction. The spec doubles the interface width from 1 DO24 bits to 2 N48 bits. With transfer speeds up to 8 gigabits per second across this wider interface, HBM4 achieves total bandwidth up to 2 terabytes per second per stack. Think about that. A single memory cube less than a millimeter tall, moving two terabytes of data every second. HBM4 achieves this massive throughput at lower clock speeds than HBM3E, making it more power efficient per bit transferred. That's critical because power consumption is now one of the biggest constraints in AI data centers. Micron's HBM4 features over 20% better power efficiency compared to their previous generation HBM3E products. Capacity is exploding too. HBM4 supports configurations up to 16 layers high with 24 GB or 32 GB die densities, allowing for capacities up to 64 GB per stack. Future accelerators will pack multiple stacks for total memory capacities of 288 GB, 384 GB or more. Micron announced shipment of HBM4 36 GB 12 high samples to multiple key customers in June 2025 and SK Hynix and Samsung started shipping engineering samples to NVIDIA, AMD and Google in the second half of 2025. Full volume production is scheduled for mid to late 2026. NVIDIA's upcoming Rubin architecture is being designed around HBM4. These systems are expected to deliver 288-384GB of VRAM with 1632TBS of aggregate bandwidth. But even HBM4 might not be the end of the road. The question is, how much higher can we build these towers of silicon? For all its advantages, HBM faces real constraints. The biggest is physical space. HBM stacks have to sit directly next to the processor on the interposer. But the perimeter around that processor is limited. Engineers call this the shoreline limitation. You can only fit so many stacks around a single chip, which puts a hard cap on total memory capacity and bandwidth. Cost is the other major barrier. A single HBM3 E4 stack costs tens of times more than a GDDR7 chip of the same capacity. The manufacturing complexity means HBM will remain confined to high-end applications where performance justifies the expense. Data center AI accelerators, supercomputers, and high-performance networking equipment. Don't expect HBM in your gaming PC. Consumer graphics cards will continue using GDDR7, which offers speeds of up to 3240 GB pays per pin, an ideal balance of price and performance for gaming. But the roadmap doesn't end with HBM4. Engineers are already working on the next breakthrough, hybrid bonding. This emerging technology would eliminate micro bumps entirely, allowing direct copper to copper connections between dies. This would enable even finer connection pitches, less than 10 micrometers, leading to better signal integrity, lower power consumption, and improved thermal performance. Hybrid bonding is still facing yield and cost challenges, but it represents the next frontier. 
When it arrives, we could see HBM5 or HBM6 with even more layers, higher capacities and bandwidths that would make today's numbers look quaint. There's also talk of integrating compute directly into the memory stack. HBM4's base logic die uses advanced 12 dynamic or 5 mouse in process nodes, allowing designers to integrate specific computing functions directly into the memory, creating what's called near memory processing. This could offload certain tasks from the main processor, reducing latency even further. Some manufacturers are exploring 20 layer stacks, though that remains speculative. What's clear is that the industry isn't slowing down. Every generation pushes the limits of what's physically possible. The memory wall was supposed to be the end of the road, the fundamental limit that would stop computing progress in its tracks. Instead, engineers looked at the problem and decided to build up. They created microscopic skyscrapers of silicon, connected by tens of thousands of copper pillars you can't see without an electron microscope. They developed bonding techniques that require nanometer precision across 16 layers. They turned a two-lane road into a 64-lane superhighway. High bandwidth memory didn't just solve the memory wall. It enabled an entirely new era of computing. Without HBM, there is no ChatGPT, no DALL-E, no modern AI as we know it. The technology that makes those systems possible isn't just the algorithms or the massive training datasets. It's these tiny cubes of stacked silicon feeding the insatiable appetite of processes that would otherwise starve. And the race isn't over. HBM4 is coming in 2026. HBM5 is already being designed. The towers keep getting taller, the connections keep getting denser, and the bandwidth keeps doubling. Sometimes, when you hit a wall, the answer isn't to break through it. It's to build a tower so high you can see over it. What other impossible hardware challenges do you think we'll need to solve as AI continues to scale? Let me know in the comments.